U.S. Ambassador to Germany Richard Grinnell is continuing to raise tempers in Berlin. On Tuesday, he accused the German government of, quote, reducing its already unacceptable commitments to military readiness, unquote, calling it a worrisome signal to Germany's NATO allies. In fact, the new budget features a small rise in both absolute military expenditures and the percentage of German GDP spent on defense. But those outlays aren't enough for Grinnell or his boss, U.S. President Donald Trump. Germany is well short of the 2 percent target agreed to at a NATO summit in 2014. And expenditures in coming years are set to remain 25 billion euros below what Germany's own defense minister says she needs. German Chancellor Angela Merkel defended the budget plan as being part of a slow but steady hike in military spending. This year, we have 1.35 percent of GDP, according to growth projections, for NATO expenditures. And we've gone from 1.18 to 1.35 in only a few years, despite robust growth. And next year, we'll increase the amount to a projected 1.37 percent of GDP. The German government is annoyed at what they see as Grinnell's meddling. A leading member of Merkel's coalition partners, the Social Democrats, shot back, Mr. Grinnell is a complete diplomatic zero. Members of the opposition have even demanded that the controversial ambassador be expelled. That's a near impossibility, but tensions over defense spending between Berlin and America's ambassador are likely to continue. Well, for more on these new tensions, political correspondent Simon Young is with us in the studio. Good morning, Simon. Uh, let's start off, if we could, with the calls for Grinnell, the U.S. ambassador, to be expelled. They come from a pro-business German politician from a party committed to the transatlantic relationship. Are we in new political territory here? That's right. Wolfgang uh, Kubicki, the, uh, the depu deputy leader of the FDP, call, uh, calling for Ambassador Grinnell to be declared persona non grata. I think it's just a measure of how ugly this dispute has got. And uh, the ambassador has got politicians here in Germany of all parties uh, saying that his interference in this domestic question of Germany's budget spending is completely unacceptable, calling it provocation and so on. And, uh, you know, that's even from those who support an increase uh, in military spending. As we know, uh, President Trump has long accused Germany of, sort of freeloading on uh, US military uh, power. Uh, and, you know, and the tone may well get even tougher in the coming weeks. Uh, in, uh, in two weeks' time, the NATO member countries are due to gather for a commemoration of the 70, 70th anniversary of the founding of NATO. And where's that happening? Washington, D.C. So, uh, you know, these, these are difficult times for NATO diplomacy. OK, and, and, and you're talking about tone coming from the ambassador's uh, residence here, here in Berlin, it, it's not just the military budget. In the past, we've heard about the Iran Treaty from Ambassador Grinnell, sharply criticized, and most recently over the past uh, a few days, um, the call for Grinnell warning that the U.S. would scale back intelligence sharing over the 5G network if Huawei, the Chinese Czech giant, was involved. This, this is a long laundry list that, that he's tweeting on quite often. He's tweeting, and indeed uh, it seems that uh, Ambassador Grinnell wrote a letter to the German economy minister, Peter Altmaier, making this uh, threat effectively, as you say, that uh, if Germany chooses Huawei for 5G, that could affect intelligence sharing. Of course, Washington believes that Huawei, the Chinese company, is too close to the regime uh, in uh, Beijing uh, and that sensitive data could leak. Um, again, a big pushback from the German side. The foreign minister, Heiko Maas, said, you know, that's uh, unacceptable and Germany will do all it can to ensure uh, the security of its key infrastructure, like the 5G network that's just being rolled out here. Um, uh, you know, some say this is really about business and that the US side would have no problem, for instance, if Germany chose Qualcomm, the US 5G uh, equipment maker. OK, Simon, thanks so very much for your comments and insights on, on these issues this morning. Simon Young there from our political desk.